Hi kids, it's good to see you. Today I want to talk to you about a very special day that's coming up in the church, All Saints Day. Now, All Saints Day happens every November the 1st, so actually All Saints Day was on Monday. But we usually celebrate All Saints Day on the first Sunday of November. Now, you might be wondering, just what is a saint? So let me start my slides and I'll kind of show you a little bit. All right. So we're going to be talking about sugar today. We're going to be looking at All Saints Day. We're going to talk about a verse from Philippians, but we'll get back to that. So my question to you, remember, was just what is a saint? Now, some of you might think that a saint is a football player from New Orleans. And you would be sort of right, and we can chuckle about that a little bit, but that isn't the kind of saint that we celebrate in the church. Now, saints are special people in the history of the church, both past and present, who shine the light of Jesus or love God in such a way that it attracts others to become followers of Jesus. Now, from scripture, we read about people like Moses and David and Ruth and Esther and Abraham and Sarah and about Isaiah and Elijah. We read about people like John the Baptist and the disciples, about Mary and Martha and their brother Lazarus. And we read about Paul, some of his friends, Barnabas and Timothy. And their stories in scripture inspire others to want to become followers of Jesus. And so these folks from, from the Bible are kind of like our saints of the past that help us understand what it means to follow God, to give our whole hearts to Jesus, to shine our lights brightly for him. And then there are some people from what we can think of as the church's history. Now, not just our own local little church, but the whole church history. And there are people like St. Augustine and Martin Luther and Charles and John Wesley and Mother Teresa and Susanna Wesley and other folks like that who, who through the way they lived their lives, the things they did, the way they helped people, the way they were kind and generous, etc., were people helped to shine the light of Jesus in such a way that it made others want to follow Jesus as well. So you see, we have saints from, from the Bible, and we have saints from the church's history. And again, there are folks who shine Jesus's light in such a way that it attracted others to also become followers. So really, a saint is anyone Anyone who's committed their lives to God and walked with him. The saints are just ordinary people like you and me who've accepted Jesus and who daily try to, to give more and more control of their lives to God and become more like Jesus every day. And when they falter or they fail or they fall down, they just get up and they keep on trying. They keep shining their light. They keep trying to be more and more like Jesus. So now I want you to think about all the people that you know in your family, in your church family, at school, who shine the light of Jesus for you. Who's drawing you to Jesus? Who's inspiring you to want to be more like them, to be more like Jesus? Those are the saints of our present. And you and I are called to be saints too. Did you know that? We're all called to live our lives in such a way that through our words and through our actions, that we shine the light of Christ for others to follow. In other words, we're good examples of Jesus's love in the places we are, like home and school and work and, and places like that, daycare, or babysitters even. So today we celebrate the past, the present, and yes, even the future saints this week as we mark, once again, All Saints Day. And as we do that, I want you to think about sugar. I want you to think about sugar. I know you got some of that, maybe not 
like this, but in candy bars and stuff on Halloween, right? So I want you to think about sugar and a verse from Philippians 4, 8 that says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is honest, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, whatever is excellent, if anything is worthy of praise, think on these things. Think on these things. Now, sugar is sweet, and it tastes good, right? And sugar is pure. So think about it a little like this. Sugar and Philippians 4, 8 should remind us that we're to live for Jesus. We need to be nice to people. We need to be kind and generous and faithful and honest. We need to treat people well, not get angry with them. And just as sugar is good to eat, we need to live our lives in such a way that others will want to taste it, so to speak. They'll find joy in our lives. The way others see us living our lives should be sweet tasting. <laughs> Again, as we're true and honorable and pure and lovely and admirable. So does the way you behave leave a joyful feeling or a good taste? Or does it leave a bad taste, a yucky taste? You see, we become pure when we let Jesus come and live inside our hearts and change us from the inside out, making us clean. And when we live a pure life, when we walk in Jesus' ways and when we follow his teachings and we follow the advice in Philippians 4, 8, then all of us, we can be examples for others in the faith to follow. And we'll be the saints of the present, helping to prepare saints for the future. And that's what Jesus wants from us, to make disciples for Jesus Christ, for the transformation of the world. He wants us to shine his light, to be saints now, to be role models and mentors for people now, so that we can begin to prepare the saints of the future. So let's pray this together. Dear Lord, let us be sweet as sugar, a joy to be around, and pure in our hearts. Amen. Thanks for joining me today, and I hope you remember our lesson about sugar, saints, and Philippians 4.8. So remember, shine your light as bright as you can for Jesus so that others will want to come and know the Jesus that you know and love. I look forward to seeing you next time.